Will you please welcome God Smart Alec Michael Joyner? Or Ramsey, come on, folks. Or Ramsey, yes. Right there, that's the guy you want explaining the facts of life to your kids. Thor Ramsey, that's the guy. Yeah, some of you are never going to be grandparents now. Okay. All right. How you folks doing? Good? Good to be here, man. Good to be doing a comedy club for a change. I've been booked at some weird gigs lately. I was actually booked at a nursing home last week, and uh, yeah, that was weird. Good crowd, though, I'll tell you. They, they laugh so hard. They want a dry seat in the house, tell you the truth. That was pretty good. Um, Uh, you guys seem like a nice crowd, though, man. I'll tell you, I was, I'm from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I was uh, there, booked there not too long ago. That's my hometown, Kansas City. Anybody from Kansas City? That's why I moved right there. That's it. <laughs> moved to L.A. from Kansas City. If you've ever been to Kansas City, they, you see billboards everywhere that say, Kansas City, cleanest big city air in the nation. That's their big claim to fame, cleanest big city. Just what are they bragging about when you think about it? That we got cleaner air than Detroit, New York, LA? Isn't that kind of like saying, my gal's the prettiest girl with a mustache? <laughs> you know? Or uh, I'm the smartest person in Arkansas. You know, it's just. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry if you're from Arkansas, I apologize. <laughs> if you're a girl from Arkansas, sorry about the mustache joke, okay? <laughs> really don't want to offend anybody. So. Actually, nice folks in Arkansas. They're really, I, I toured the whole state not too long ago, and uh, here's the thing. I, noticed, I saw signs everywhere. I think it was going on statewide. It said, Arkansas Shakespeare Festival. <laughs> you don't need a punchline for that, do you? What light in that yonder winter done broke over there? Romeo, Romeo, where y'all at? <laughs> to be or not to be? What was the question again? <laughs> Actually, I can't make too much fun. I used to live in Raytown, Missouri myself. Uh, I don't know if you heard about the guy from Raytown who won a gold medal at the Olympics. He uh, had it bronzed and everything. <laughs> I'll tell you, some of my hillbilly neighbors used to drive me nuts. I'd hate telling them what I do for a living because they always ask the dumbest questions. So where do you work? I'm a comedian. Really? So do you travel or? <laughs> no, I just perform in my front yard. <laughs> Wanna go get your lawn chair? We're gonna have a dinner show in about half an hour. <laughs> That's another thing, get so sick of every question ending in er. So you got any kids or? <laughs> what are you, a lawnmower? <laughs> I used to have this one neighbor, doesn't have ideas, he's got ideals. Here's an ideal for you. I'm going, you know, you might want to save that L for another word later. Well, most of you are laughing, a lot of you are looking at me like an Amish person at Circuit City. I'm not getting any of this. So it is good to be doing a comedy club. I know we always get a good crowd in comedy clubs. I do colleges, corporate gigs, churches. Uh, I was booked at a church not too long ago. They had an evangelist come up after me. And uh, I love evangelists. I really do. I just wish that while they're preaching, they could tell me to turn the person next to me and say stuff. Yeah. Sometimes really dumb stuff, right? Like, turn to your neighbor and say I'm happy as a pappy. <laughs> I'm happy as a pappy. I'm happy as a pappy. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be something really long, right? Like, turn to your neighbor and say I'm a devil-hating, God-loving, sanctified, blood-bought, charismatic, born-again, Kmart shopping, under-armed, your own and wearing child of the king. <laughs> You'd be trying to write it down like, dude, slow down. <laughs> Here, I'm this. That's me right there. <laughs> That don't happen in some Baptist churches, man, because you ain't a lot of talk in some of these Baptist churches. <laughs> They'd be like, hey, no talking. What, are you not saved? <laughs> you better walk this aisle and say the sinner's prayer in King James only. 
That's right, Baptists love that King James. You ever notice some of me even talking King James? <laughs> How artest thou today, Brother Delbert? <laughs> Fineth, Brother Cleotus. <laughs> get thee up hither and get thou saved, for ye do not know whether or not ye shall get run over by a Mack truck. <laughs> Baptists invented that, the old Mack truck scare tactic. Greatest thing they ever came up with. <laughs> More people got saved. And it was always a Mack truck, never a Peterbilt. <laughs> Never you might get hit by a van or a school bus or have a heart attack. It was always, if you don't get saved, you can walk out of here tonight and get hit by a Mack truck. So I've been listening to rap music. Everybody's into rap music. I live in L.A. I just thought I'd give that a try. And uh, some of it's okay, but I think the gangster rap is dangerous. As a matter of fact, thanks to gangster rap, we have a big problem among teenagers called crack. I'm not talking about the drug. Talk about the way they wear their pants. <laughs> Raising a generation of plumbers, for crying out loud. <laughs> I was standing line at this McDonald's in L.A. not too long ago. The kid working behind the counter had his pants pulled down like that a little bit. He had this uh, bandana hanging out of his pocket, his McDonald's work hat tipped around the side. I said, who are you with, man? The McCrips? <laughs> They got this new program in L.A. to try to help keep kids out of gangs. I hope it works, but uh, here's the thing. Whenever I read in the paper about gangs shooting up a house, 99% of the time, it's the wrong house. <laughs> so here's my idea for a program. Phone books for gangbangers. <laughs> we start there. Sometimes people say, Mike, aren't you worried they're going to shoot up your house making fun of them? No, but my neighbors should be worried. <laughs> I thought it was 4567. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been living in LA going on two years now. And uh, my first week in LA, I got three parking tickets in a row in one week. It's crazy if you got out of state plates. My third parking ticket, I was going to the comedy store in Hollywood. I parked my car, read the sign 50 times. I go in, I come out. I got a ticket because my wheel was not turned towards the curb. On my way home, going down Sunset Boulevard, I see a guy in a G-string carrying a bottle of wine yelling at people. He's okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess he parks straight. <laughs> I'm the troublemaker. So, well, what else been going on? I eat at a lot of fast food restaurants being on the road, too. I'll tell you, there's so many in this nation, it's incredible. I was just in the Windy City not too long ago in Chicago, where there are more Taco Bells per square mile than anywhere. Could be why they call it the Windy City, now I think about it. <laughs> Remember when fast food restaurants used to have a good reputation, like Burger King used to have that slogan, special orders don't upset us? Yeah, these days it sure does confuse the hell, though, doesn't it? It's like, yeah, let me get a Whopper with cheese, please. Whopper with cheese? Beep, 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 beep. Uh, no mayo. No mayo. Let me see if I can do this. Beep, 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 I'm like, hey man, just give me a plastic knife, I'll scrape it off. <laughs> knife? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> hey, Roadrunner, just cancel it there, pal. Is <laughs> that doggone cancel button? Still need that manager! <laughs> well, wait a minute, I'm the manager. <clears throat> Is there a problem here? And doesn't it seem like they always let the biggest goofball work the late night drive through window at some of these joints? I pulled up one of these fast food restaurants the other night, the guy at the speaker goes, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, let me get a uh, double cheeseburger. Uh, we don't have double cheeseburgers anymore. Do you have cheeseburgers? Yes, we do. Give me two cheeseburgers, put it on one bun. <laughs> I'll have to ask the manager if we can do that. <laughs> Look, man, forget it. Look, just give me uh, two regular cheeseburgers, a medium fry, a small Coke, and can you put some extra ketchup in the bag, please? Can you? 
okay, I'm back. He said we can't do that. <laughs> what? The man just said we can only sell what's on the menu. Double cheeseburgers are on the menu. We're out, dude. Okay, look. <laughs> Give me two cheeseburgers, a medium fry. Oh, we don't have medium, sir. We have small, large, and extra large. Okay, which one of those is in the middle? Uh, he wants to know which one's in the middle, which one is Large? Give me the large. Okay, would you like some fries with that? That's what I just ordered, Opie. I just ordered fries. How'd you know my name was Opie? What size did you want? Look, I got the medium. We don't have medium, sir. We have small. Look, I got the one in the middle. What is that, large? Uh, he keeps asking me which one's in the middle. Is it there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, look. Give me two cheeseburgers, a large fry, and a small coat. It's like super size, that fry? <laughs> what, are you working on commission now? <laughs> no. But we can supersize that fry for 39 cents. Look, forget the fry, just give me two cheeseburgers and a small Coke. Okay, but if you get the combo platter, we give you a small fry with that for the same price. And give me the combo with the small fry. It's like supersize that fry. I'll tell you what, Opie, forget everything, just give me one cheeseburger. Can you handle that one cheeseburger? Okay, but we have a special on double cheeseburgers. You've been there, you've been there, huh? I like Applebee's, though. Good buffalo wings at Applebee's. I was there. Yeah. Uh, except they're on the appetizer menu, and for some reason the waitress will always ask me, you going to have that as a meal, sir? No, as a beverage, Heather. You want to put that in a blender for me? <laughs> they do ask some dumb questions there, don't they? First thing they ask you when you go in, smoking preference? Yeah, Marlboro Lights. You got that one? Just blow that my way, that's my favorite. <laughs> Go in by yourself. Just one of you today, sir? No, I got a Siamese twin. He's attached to my ups, must have fell off. <laughs> Go check the bushes. They're out there in the bushes going, smoking preference? And who came up with this system at Applebee's? It drives me nuts where every customer gets like six waiters a piece. You know what I'm talking about? Hi, I'm Winona. I'll be your waitress this evening. I'll be taking your order. Bob will bring your food. Julia will bring your napkin. Debbie will bring your beverage. <laughs> Susie will come by as soon as you got a mouthful of food and ask you how everything is. <laughs> and we'll make sure not a one of us is in sight when you're ready for your check. <laughs> Welcome to Applebee's. So I'm in a pretty good mood this week. I just bought myself a nice car. Not a new one, but a pretty nice one. I've never in my life had a decent car. Even when I was young and single, which kind of stinks, because, you know, chicks go for the guys with the nice cars when you're young and single. Corvettes, Mustangs. Too bad for me, Pacer went on the list. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have been Rico Suave. <laughs> That's what I had, man, Pacer. Paid 250 bucks for it, because I wasn't about to get a used one. Pacer, what a car. Thing wasn't even a car, it's more like a window and four tires. <laughs> Remember that big giant window? Ain't no chicks riding with Bubble Boy. <laughs> One time I wore all white, people thought I was the Pope. <laughs> I'll tell you, that car was messed up too, man. Had like one broken headlight and the one that worked point straight up in the sky like the bat signal. <laughs> I get people following me thinking there was a grand opening somewhere. <laughs> that doggone new Walmart keeps moving. I hated winters in a Pacer too, man, because the heater's got like two settings, you know? Cold or fire and brimstone. <laughs> Can either have icicles coming out of your nostrils or no eyebrows. <laughs> Siberia pizza oven, what do you want? Oh, driving's a pain. You guys got the road construction in Columbus happening, don't you? I forgot, we're not supposed to say that. You guys got the road construction happening in this city and state, don't you? 
I, uh, <laughs> See, they may not buy the video if they know where we taped it. It's bad enough I'm the one starring in it. It's, uh, road construction's everywhere. My goodness, apparently really making folks mad. I see signs everywhere now that say, End construction. <laughs> Good idea, I'll sign that petition myself. <laughs> Here's another sign I see in the, in the Midwest near the Roku's, you ever see this one? Give them a break. Give them a break, these guys get paid 25 bucks an hour to hold up a sign. <laughs> what a break look like, put a sandwich in the other hand? <laughs> you ever notice the guy holding the sign always fits what the sign says, slow. <laughs> How do they manage that every single time? <laughs> oh, I hate to say it when it's not the road construction slowing you down, it's the really old folks in the fast lane. <laughs> I'm always getting stuck behind that one old guy in the fast lane driving that Ford Tortoise or whatever they drive. <laughs> you know the guy I'm talking about? Blinker's been on since he bought the car. <laughs> you can always tell when it's a really old guy because they all have that same silhouette where the ears get twice as big as the head? Because they grow like summer squash when you hit 85, don't they? My grandpa makes Ross Perot look like Vincent Van Gogh. I'm not kidding. I think his ears grow an inch per year. Do weird stuff when you get really old, man. My grandmother actually kind of shrinks every year. Anybody else got grandmas like that? They kind of get smaller, yeah? My grandma just turned 98. Yeah, she's about that big. Her and Grandpa go to the movies, he just sneaks her in his ear. It works out really good. <laughs> Speaking of old folks, this is true. I remember the guy who wrote the lyrics to the Hokey Pokey passed away not too long ago. Yeah, he was in his 80s. And uh, I heard at his funeral they had a big problem when it came time to lowering his casket into the grave. <laughs> they don't get ahead of me over here. First, they uh, put the casket in, <laughs> took the casket out, put it back in, shook it all about. His friends and family are going, hey, what's this all about? <laughs> Should be getting that joke in Arkansas about right now. <laughs> I was watching this TV news show the other day. They had this story about this guy who had the first ever successful hand transplant. Yeah. I heard he was really excited when he woke up and they told him it was success. He was like, cool! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's worth two claps. Maybe if we clap, we'll quit doing it. Right before I moved from Kansas City, they had this thing in the newspaper. This is true, you guys may have read about it, where about a dozen Kansas City, Kansas cops surrounded this house for like six hours, guns drawn and everything, only to find out that the guy they thought was inside had already turned himself into police station earlier. <laughs> hey, we ain't gonna see that episode on cops, huh, folks? <laughs> six hours. I'm thinking, what'd the guy do, make bail? Then he shows up at his house going, hey man, what's going on? <laughs> Be belly, belly quiet while hunting wabbit. advice phone first so not too long ago I did my first cruise gig anybody here been on a cruise been on a cruise before yeah was it a nice one man what kind of cruise ship was it Royal Caribbean that's a nice one yeah not like that low budget deal I was on the SS satanic I think it was called <laughs> what a nightmare first of all we're like four and a half hours late leaving the dock I look out some guy in a truck's giving us a jump I cannot believe how small my room was. I'm not kidding, I was on the john, somebody knocked at my door, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> my first night there, I'm not kidding, I accidentally flushed one of my socks down the toilet, found it the next day in the pool. <laughs> Didn't do much swimming. 
few years before that, I did my first overseas gig in Hong Kong. That was kind of cool. There's uh, one American comedy club in Hong Kong. Lots of Buddhists in Hong Kong, I noticed. Yeah, they're everywhere, Buddhists. Got their little keychains, WWBD. <laughs> I'll keep talking, you folks pick the ones you like, okay? <laughs> Lots of British folks in Hong Kong too, which kind of got me thinking, how come foreigners can move to the United States, live here all their life, still retain their accent? Americans go visit England for a weekend, they come back sound like one of the Beatles. <laughs> well, we had a bloody good time at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> you know, I figured it out, it's because English is a cool accent, people want to sound like that, right? English, Australian, those are cool accents. I mean, with all due respect, you didn't get me coming back from Hong Kong going, oh, we had good time there, good time. Good food, everything. We take a lots of pictures. Don't see too much of that. So I do a lot of flying with this gig and uh, fly all over the place. People always ask me if I'm afraid to fly these days. I'm not. But I'll tell you what I hate, I hate these really small planes they put you on whenever you have to make a connection that isn't near a major airport. I did this one get connected to me like four times, man. The planes just kept getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> Last one didn't have a pilot, just some guy on the ground holding a remote control. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. How is it you can learn to fly a jumbo jet, but you cannot learn to make an announcement over the PA without getting stumped? Every pilot in the world does the same thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. I uh, just wanted to let you know that... Uh, we've landed. <laughs> and I want to know whose great idea it was to always pass out the peanuts two and a half hours before beverage service. <laughs> After everybody's completely dehydrated. Would you like something to drink? No, just keep bringing me more peanuts, will you? I'd like to resemble Lot's wife by the time we land. <laughs> when they finally get to you, what do they bring you? A cup about that big. Oh, thanks, we haven't communion? Do I get a wafer with this? So now I'm drinking shots of Pepsi. <laughs> Ding! Set him up again, darling. Rounds for everybody. Or they hate when you ring that thing. Sometimes they don't even show up. They're like, bing! <laughs> ding, 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 ding. They finally get there. What? Where were you, in the basement? <laughs> yes, stewardess, can I get a pillow, please? Not a big pillow. One about the size of a chicklet will do. Thank you very much. <laughs> I prefer to have to fold it 40 times. First time I saw those, I thought they were earplugs. <laughs> Sticking one in each ear. I used to like to travel and tape my own show, you know, and uh, you know, with the tripod, but the tripod freaks them out. I have to check the tripod. Every time it goes through the x-ray machine, they're like, what's that? Oh, that's what I was gonna hit the pilot over the head with when I take over the plane. <laughs> you know, if you haven't been around enough to know what a tripod is, what's the chances you're gonna recognize a bomb? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so I, uh, since I moved to LA, I started getting in shape, joined a health club, everybody's into that. And uh, don't you hate when you go to the health club and you can't find a parking space close to the door? <laughs> Forget this, man, I'll come back another time. <laughs> and I hate when you're at the health club and those big buff guys come up to you, mind if I jump in with you? Especially when I'm in the shower. No! <laughs> My oldest boy is starting to get kind of heavy. He's in elementary school. He started gaining a little weight, so I uh, put him on a diet. Because uh, I just don't want him being that one kid on the Little League team whose jersey is a slightly different color than everybody else's. <laughs> Whole team's orange, except for that giant pink object playing left field. <laughs> That's my boy, the Red Rover champ of Southern California. Can you tell where the new jokes are? <laughs> That's okay. I've been thinking about doing that, do, that new uh, Atkins diet, that new Dr. Atkins diet. The one where you're shoveling your driveway and you fall down and die. I was going to do that. 
Do that diet there. Thank you, sir. Thanks for showing up tonight. He's like, I'll laugh at anything, doggone. I don't care. I'm getting my money's worth. You got to joke about everything, even death. I had, to, I had to go to a funeral not too long ago, and here's what I noticed. Have you ever had to tell a mutual acquaintance that someone you both know died? And there's always someone who go, he died? I was just talking to him yesterday. <laughs> now you're probably talking to him before he died. <laughs> so you can joke about dying, just don't make it Dr. Atkins, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I figured you guys out, man. Uh, no, you're a wonderful group, wonderful group. Uh, Sam's Club members here tonight, did they already ask that? Story asked that? A few people? All right. Just a few, though. Now, now, you folks that aren't members, what are you going to do when you find yourself in need of a case of macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Don't try to get into Sam's members only. Boy, they do have some gargantuan volume-sized stuff there. And you can always tell the people are just joined and aren't aware of this fact, because they're not buying anything. They're just walking around like they're in a zoo for food. <laughs> Look at the size of that bottle of ketchup. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's go see the peanut butter exhibit. <laughs> I bought like one item since I joined that place, a box of potato flakes the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> Should last me through the millennium. So, where was the married folks at? We got a lot of married folks here tonight. Married? Yeah. Cool. Was somebody over here recently engaged? Did they ask about that? Recently engaged or married? Apparently there is, because he can't talk. Uh, we have an agreement. Uh, yeah. She finishes the sentences. Nobody recently engaged or married? Yeah. Where at? How long? How long? Yesterday? Shouldn't you be somewhere else now? <laughs> That's congratulations, sir. That's fantastic. So you didn't take a honeymoon yet? No. <laughs> Is your wife here tonight? Recently engaged. Oh, recently engaged, not married. Yeah. When's the honeymoon? <laughs> I mean, when's the, mar when's the wedding? Thank God for editing. When's the wedding? Next summer? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So you, you asked, you proposed yesterday? Yes, wow, and she said yes, obviously, and she's here tonight. No. <laughs> she's not, she's going, I got till next summer, right? <laughs> you do what you want to do. <laughs> she's not here, well that's okay. What's your name, sir? Matt. Matt? And what's your wonderful wife's name to be? Julia. Julia. That's a, that's a romantic name there, Julia. Are you making this up, Matt? <laughs> uh, Romeo and Julia. <laughs> no. Well, you're going to learn a lot in marriage, Matt, that's for sure. I'll tell you right now, you have to, good you have, to have a good sense of humor in marriage. That's right. <laughs> Matt, I was telling my wife the other day, I said, Honey, you know guys like Tom Cruise are a dime a dozen. She goes, Here's a nickel, get me six. <laughs> You're going to learn a lot in marriage, that's for sure. One of the many things you will learn when you first move in with your wife is that there are two types of towels in the bathroom. <laughs> towels you can use if you want to dry off and towels you can use if you want to get killed. <laughs> Matt, those are the good towels and the good towels are just for company to look at. Don't ask what that means, just memorize it. I guarantee you, the first time you forget and she catches you, you're going to be walking around like Rain Man. Definitely shouldn't have used the good towels. Definitely shouldn't have used the good towels. Uh-oh. I will never forget the first time I learned about the good towels. My wife and I are both in the bathroom, standing at the sink. I just get done washing my hands. I happily start to reach for the closest towel. Do, 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 do. All of a sudden I hear, step away from the towels. <laughs> step away from... <laughs> it's my darling sweet wife looking a lot like Dirty Harry. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, punk. 
Are those the good towels or the bad towels? Well, you want to get lucky later, punk? <laughs> they better be the bad towels. Well, she'll hurt you bad if she doesn't kill you. And no court would convict her, because they know, especially a woman judge. He did what? <laughs> he used the good towels after playing mud football. So you set him on fire while he was asleep. Well, that's self-defense. <laughs> Community service. Oh, where do you start with what the women go through? Ladies, any of you married to a snorer? Who's married to a snorer? Yeah, pretty much everyone here. Ladies, isn't it true you can talk to your husbands about it all you want? They don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean I snore? I think I know if I snored. <laughs> But they don't know, because some of them snore so loud they wake themselves up. They still don't know. They're like... <laughs> Honey, wake up. I think there's somebody on the roof. I think they're ripping the shingles off the house. I'm serious. You gonna go check? Now my wife, she doesn't really snore, but every once in a while while she's sleeping, her nostril gets stuck. <laughs> to the inside of her nose, she turns into this party favor. <laughs> Taxis are pulling up to our house. Sometimes it sounds like a B-52 coming out of the sky. Neighbors are in their pajamas, falling in the bomb shelter. <laughs> I'll tell you, if she's having a really rough night, get all kinds of noises. <laughs> My dog thinks we're going outside. <laughs> Go back to sleep, Sparky. Oh, uh, the other night it was driving me nuts, so I tried to plug it up. It's a lot of work for 10 laughs. <laughs> so we got three little boys. We just had our third little boy. He's one year old and uh, he's in the car. You guys want to see him? I'll bring him in. <laughs> he's a cutie. It's my week to watch him. I was actually in the delivery room for all of them, which is cool. But however, I wish someone would have told me that they kind of come out purple. This last one, he was solid purple, man. For a split second, I was actually thinking, the weekend Barney was at the mall. Where was my wife? <laughs> Doesn't look like me. <clears throat> I was watching the Batman movies with my boys the other day. They love those Batman movies. But here's, here's what I don't get about the movie Batman, okay? Batman's got a billion dollar car, a billion dollar boat, a billion dollar jet. But does it ever occur to the people of Gotham City that his secret identity might be the one billionaire who lives there? <laughs> movies are so expensive, too. My goodness, theater prices are outrageous. You go to the movies, it's like, now let me get that uh, jumbo popcorn and two large Cokes off layaway, please. Can you do me a favor, Mr. Cinema Guy? Can you make sure to pack that ice to overflowing in that little soda cup so I get all of a spoonful worth of pop for my 10 bucks? <laughs> Can you do that, clear sill boy? <laughs> you gotta tell him, don't you? Three ice cubes, pal. Three ice cubes. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Hey, you're the manager of Burger King, aren't you? I knew I seen you before. Took my kids the other not uh, not too long ago to see Spy Kids 2 with Antonio Banderas. Here's my impersonation of every person in the audience watching Antonio Banderas in a movie. What do you say? <laughs> it's like every other line. There's like two or three words that's kind of an unintelligible utterance. You have no idea what he's saying. At one point in the movie, he says the lady playing his wife. He goes. We can't take the keys with us if we're not going to Carmen de la Jose. 
Even she turned the audience and goes, what'd he say? <laughs> Do what? So I've been, uh, it's at the dollar store earlier today. I love that place, the dollar store. I was over there uh, getting a present for my wife. And uh, <laughs> actually I was checking on my CD sales, but uh, This is absolutely true. I'm not kidding. I'm at this dollar store getting all these items, right? And the, first of all, the cashier is like scanning stuff. <laughs> at the dollar store. And one item won't go through, so she keeps trying it. I'm thinking, if she calls for a price check, I'm going to punch her. She keeps trying. And finally, I'm like, uh, pretty sure it's a dollar. And the people who shop there are just as bad. I don't know how many times I've been in the dollar store, the one somebody going, how much is this? I'm thinking, it's the dollar store. Can you memorize that? One time I said it right to their face. I did. I got fired, but it was worth it. Uh, I was reading the New Testament the other day. Reading the Bible there about the new, and uh, not a lot in the Bible about Jesus as a little kid, I noticed. That had to be pretty rough being the Son of God. That's a lot of pressure on a kid. I could see Jesus at his high school graduation party. All the kids were like bugging him, trying to get him to turn the punch into wine. You think Mary and Joseph had a picture of Jesus? They showed all their friends. They'd be looking at it going, wow, no matter where you go, he's looking at you. Cute kid. I go to a Pentecostal church myself. Any uh, Pentecostals here? Good, let's make fun of them. Whenever I tell somebody I go to a Pentecostal church, they always say the same thing. Isn't that where they raise their hands in church? And it is, yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, interpretation. Did you hear that? It is true. It can be kind of freaky if you never experienced it. Like, I remember the first time I ever walked into my church, I remember thinking, oh, we're allowed to ask questions. I got one. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> they never pick me. And, of course, we have the tongues, which especially freaks some of the Baptists out. I don't blame them, because some of us got some weird tongues, man. Some people got tongues that even freaks the tongue talkers out. <laughs> I was standing next to a guy like that in church the other day. He's like, Kelly bop bop, 23 skadoodly bee bop, da kawabunga da doodly bee. I'm going, Lord, I rebuke that right there. That's just not right. I sit next to this one guy in church whose tongue sounded like a water faucet need a fixing. Hoodly drip, rip, rip, doodly. I used to want to reach over and screw his head on tighter. Dude, I'm going to pray God sends you a plumber. <laughs> and no matter what Pentecostal church you go into, there's always one person whose tongue sounds like a car that won't start. Hooli, 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 run, 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 hooli, 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 hooli. <laughs> and the interpretation is always the same. The Lord says, get a tune up. <laughs> Uh, I was going to joke about your city, but uh, we're not really going to mention what city we're in right now. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll still joke about it, but you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you guys know where you live, right? You know where you live? Uh, go hmm? Oh, go ahead, he says. The mayor's here. <laughs> well, you don't, how you doing, sir? You all right? Did you say that, sir? Do I have lazy eye? I'm talking to him, ain't I? It's not like TV, it's I can see you right there, okay. It's, uh... Was that you said that? Somebody else, did I get the wrong person? Oh, it was this person, I am talking to... No idea what you're talking about, pal. You know. well, hey, somehow you threw your voice into the dummy. Anyway, uh... You're all nice, letting me pick on you, right? Put the gun down, sir. I'm just kidding. I really am. You got on a... Is that a post... What's that? Turn the channel. I thought 
thought that was funny. I was hoping you guys appreciate it. That was a good joke. He turned the channel. What was the question I asked you? Now I can't remember. Are you a post, postal worker? I'm looking at a, do you have some kind of uniform? What's that say? This guy, not you now. Now he's going to answer me. You, sir, the one I thought I was talking to earlier. Your maintenance for this building here? So somebody who thinks you're fixing their air conditioner right now. <laughs> I'm just one I could see. I can't see with the lights. Oh, so maintenance. I thought we were a postal worker. Didn't want to make you mad. I know it's the post office. You're a postal worker? Right in the front row. Woo! He ain't laughing. He's snapping. He's ready to go any second here. God bless you, sir. You're wonderful. Wonderful. This is true. You can vouch for this. I noticed the post office doesn't have those FBI wanted posters anymore. Because they're all postal workers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Remember when they used to have those? They didn't have the picture and then the fingerprints, you know, in case, well, he doesn't look familiar, but I've seen those prints before. You know. I've seen that. There was a while there, it was dangerous, wasn't it? Man, I remember. I, I wouldn't, i go, cover me, I'm going for stamps. I think they're all right now. That's great. Anybody else got an interesting job? I'm going to take off here in a second. I just thought I'd ask what's happening out here. Anybody got a really interesting job? Postal worker's a good one. Huh? What's that? Lee Iacocca is here, ladies and gentlemen. Lee Iacocca. Is that it? Is that who you resemble? Yeah, I wish. You wish. I wish, too. Maybe you signing anything you got. Okay. Nobody got an interesting job here? Was Thor talking about that? What was it? I missed that. The kangaroo. What do you do with kangaroos? Where? Where at? Well, I'm way off tonight, ain't I? He's in Columbus. I'm looking in Louisville over here. Okay. What do you do with kangaroos, sir? We have a sanctuary. A sanctuary in Columbus. How is business, I must ask? Uh, yeah, we need food stamps is what's happening. We're just, uh, I don't know why. I thought it would go over great. A sanctuary. Explain that to me. He should be the postal worker. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? Yeah, well, how many kangaroos do you get, period? Even well ones is what I'm wondering in Columbus. Oh, so it's a national, it's a worldwide thing, and they ship them here. Oh, so, and with the internet, you advertise. Yeah? Wow, kangaroos. And those guys are tough. I've seen them on those hidden videos. They'll punch you. Yeah? Punch you in everything, man. Have you been punched by a kangaroo? You've been hit by a kangaroo in the face? Did you hit him back? Punch you out, pal. This is only a sanctuary for good kangaroos. So what do you do? He hits you in the face, huh? Did he stop after the first punch then? He was like... Thanks for making the show, I say that. His best bit was the kangaroo bit. That was his best bit. I gotta get your card. I am so curious. What's the website? You want to What's the website? I mean, they probably edited it out, but what is it? Uh, RooSociety.org. What society? Society. How about something easy, like we're the only people in the world who do this, <laughs> dot org. Okay, I'll get your card from me. That's very interesting. That's wonderful. Well, anyway, I'm going to end one of my favorite little jokes here. Give yourself a round of applause for coming out. Thor's going to come back up in one second. And uh, you guys have been a wonderful crowd, man. Obviously, you're really promoting this, and I appreciate it, promoting clean comedy and stuff like that. And uh, it's very nice of you to come out tonight. Keep coming. Tell everybody else about it. You know, a lot of us folks are uh, Christians, except for a couple, but... Uh, for, uh, <laughs> I love you guys. I just want to tour with you guys from now on. Nobody else. Just, we'll just go together. Well, you guys are wonderful. And I just want to say, you know, we live in a hurting world, man. So uh, check out the Lord. He's there for you. He really is. I'm not going to get all preachy on you tonight because uh, 
we just got some good folks here. But you know, I, you never know who's out there. And uh, laughter is a great alleviation of the pain. But if you want something to take away forever, Jesus Christ is real, and he's in the he's in the Word of God. And man, check him out. He's cool. He's awesome. Okay. Which reminds me of one of my favorite little jokes, and then I'm going to get out of here. Okay, there's this guy living on an island, and he's all, I mean, uh, he's stuck on an island, and, uh, you know, he's been there like 10 years, and all of a sudden he sees a ship, finally, you know, so he lights a fire, and sure enough, the guy in the ship sees him, and he docks the boat. He gets off, and he sees this guy, and there's this guy all by himself with three huts. And he goes, hey, how you doing? He goes, great, I'm saved. I've been here 10 years. I'm all by myself. He said, you're all by yourself? He said, yeah, just me. He said, well, what are those three huts? He goes, oh, I built those. Yeah, I built those. He goes, well, what are they? He says, oh, that one there, it's, a, it's my house. I built that. I live there. It's my house. He goes, oh, yeah, how about the other one? He said, oh, that's my church. That's where I worship. I built that. He said, okay, how about that one? He goes, oh, that's a church I used to go to. <laughs> God bless you guys. I'm Michael Joyner. Thank you very much. Thank you.